I love vaginas. I love women. I do not see them as separate things. Women pay me to dominate them, to excite them, to make them come. I did not start out like this, no, to the contrary. I started out as a lawyer. But <laughs> with making women happy. I got, so it began as a mission of sorts, but then I got involved in it. I got very good at it, kind of brilliant. It was my art. I started getting paid for it. It was as if, as if I had found my calling. I wore outrageous outfits when I dominated women, lace and silk and leather, and I used props, whips, handcuffs, rope, dildos. There was nothing like this in tax law. <laughs> <laughs> there were no props, no excitement, and I hated those blue corporate suits. Although, I wear them now from time to time in my new line of work, and they serve quite nicely. <laughs> There were no props in corporate law, no wetness, no dark, mysterious foreplay. No erect nipples, no delicious mouths. But mainly, there was no moaning. <laughs> <laughs> Not the kind I'm talking about. <laughs> this was the key I see now. Moaning was the thing that ultimately seduced me and got me addicted to making women happy. When I was a little girl, and I would see women in the movies making love, making strange, orgasmic moaning noises, I used to laugh. I got strangely hysterical. I couldn't believe that big, outrageous, ungoverned sounds like that were coming out of women. I longed to moan. I practiced in front of a mirror on a tape recorder, moaning in various keys, various tones. <laughs> but always, when I played it back, it sounded fake. It was fake. It wasn't rude in anything sexual, really. Only in my desire to be sexual. But then, when I was 10, I had to be really bad once on a car trip. It went on for almost an hour, and when I finally got to pee in this dirty little gas station, it was so exciting. I moaned. I moaned as I peed. I couldn't believe it, me moaning in a Texaco station in the middle of Louisiana. I realized right then that moans are connected to not getting what you want right away with putting things off. I realized moans were best when they caught you by surprise. They came out of this hidden, mysterious part of you that was speaking its own language. I realized that moans were, in fact, that language. I became a moaner. It made most men anxious. Frankly, it terrified them. <laughs> I was loud. They couldn't concentrate on what they were doing. <laughs> they lose focus. Then they'd lose everything. <laughs> you couldn't make love in people's homes. The walls were too thin. I got a reputation in my building, and people stared at me with contempt in the elevator. <laughs> Too intense, some call me insane. <laughs> I began to feel bad about moaning. I got quiet and polite. I made noise into a pillow. I learned to choke my moan, hold it back like a sneeze. <laughs> I began to get headaches and stress related disorders. I was becoming hopeless. When I discovered women, I discovered that most women loved my moaning, but more importantly, I discovered how excited I got when other women moaned, when I was responsible for other women moaning. I made love to quiet women, 
and I found this place inside them, and they shot themselves in their moaning. I made love to moaners, and they found a deeper, more penetrating moan. It was a kind of surgery, a kind of delicate science, finding the tempo, the exact location or home of the moan. That's Sometimes I found it over a woman's jeans. Sometimes I snuck up on it, off the record, quietly disarming the surrounding alarms and moving. Sometimes I used force, but not violent, oppressing force. More like dominating. I'm gonna take you someplace and back and enjoy the ride. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they almost moan. Oh. 